Hey everybody, welcome to Mud Girl Pottery. I'm Melanie, sitting here in my studio, my chaotic mess over here in New Jersey. So today's video, we're gonna talk about plates. I often say plates are the hardest thing you're ever going to make. A lot of people are pretty surprised at that because the minute you put clay on a wheel, the wheel is going, yay, we're gonna make a plate. The centripetal force wants that clay to go wide and flat. But there's actually some skill and a little bit of technique to making a really good plate. Lots of different ways it can go wrong. Your plate could be too thin, it could be too thick, it could warp, um, it could be uneven in thickness, so therefore create some crackage in the middle. You also need to decide if you want what I call the farmhouse plate, which is sort of just like a flat piece of clay that kind of curls up in the side, sort of a modified shallow, shallow bowl, or if you want to make a plate that has a foot on the bottom. Very often this foot will help to secure the structure of the plate in order to keep it flat. So here's a video on how to make a plate. Enjoy. Okay, so centering on a plaster bat is a little more complicated than centering on your normal plastic or masonite bat. This is meant to absorb the moisture pretty quickly. So you're gonna need a decent amount of water so that your hands don't get stuck on the side. So this too is a little bit of a learning curve. So I want it to stick because with the plaster bat, again, it dries up. So right now my hand is starting to stick here. So it can cause some bleeding, <laughs> some discomfort. So I just wanna make sure that I am adding enough water so that I can get the clay gliding through my fingers. Um, one of the important things also is that you don't allow a pile of clay to end up on your plaster bat. That won't give you a level surface to judge your centering. With any pot, whether it's short and wide or tall and skinny, you want to center tall and high. It is very hard to center a mound of clay this wide. It's hard to affect this clay here by pushing on the outside if your clay is all the way out here. So I usually recommend that you always start high and wide. Now that volcano, that volcano will happen. So sometimes I'll stick my thumb in there to stop that volcano from closing up. What I want to actually do is affect that dry clay that's getting stuck down on the bottom. So I'm literally peeling back the wet clay so that now I can add water to that dry clay. So essentially I'm wedging the clay on the wheel, sort of bringing up that wet clay, that dry clay from the center and then exposing it up on top so that I can add some water to it. Just gonna hang out here for a while. Now, once you've got it centered, I would definitely try and get this up because again, the plaster bat really wants to create some leather hard clay down there. And it's always great to have a, a base. The worst is when you wire a pot off and you've got these little buckles underneath because these air bubbles got trapped. So now in order to make a large platter, we want this clay to come all the way out here. This is the hard part. The hard part is trying to get the clay wide and flat and still keeping it centered. So what I do, <laughs> and on the plaster back, so what I do is I push towards down on the bottom and the clay, in, I'm sorry, I push down in the middle and the clay will start to ooze out. Now I don't want to create a space under here. So this hand is at a slight angle so that the clay creates this shape on the outside and not that round shape that'll create the air bubbles. I do that by pushing with this whole entire side while I'm pushing down in the middle. Ooh, don't know where that came from. This all of a sudden became a pimple popping video. I might have an air bubble in there, so I'm gonna go ahead and just take that piece of clay out, and I did. So there was an air bubble trapped right in there, so now we're dealing with a little less than five pounds. Now with a large platter, just like a regular plate, you can have many choices. You can have something that just goes flat, sort of like a short shallow bowl that scoops up at the end, or you want to make something that has a good foot to it. So therefore, a lot of people underestimate how much of a foot they need. 
So what they'll do is they'll flatten this a little too much. Now you wanna keep in mind that you wanna have room for the foot, a little bit more for the wall of the plate, plus that wire tool, if you weren't using a plaster bat, will take off an eighth to a sixteenth inch worth of clay. And if you want to glaze the bottom part of your plate or your platter, you have to have a good foot. Otherwise you're very limited to the amount of the type of glazes that you use. So always thinking about the final product as you're making your pot. Always compressing to avoid that surprised, that surprising warp at that very final product. You won't see the warping until you get to the final firing. You might see it earlier, but at the end, you're kind of like, why is that oval? All right, so I've got myself sort of this Frisbee. And let me show you guys how thick I have the bottom of my pot. So that is about three quarters of an inch. And you may think that's a lot, but again, wall of your pot, foot, part that may get taken away with the wire tool. So that's exactly how much clay you want if you want to make a platter that has a good foot to it. If you don't want a foot, that's fine. All right, so now what I want to do is quote unquote open up. Now I'm not going to make a hole. What I'm going to do with my sponge is I'm going to decide where the eating area or serving area of my plate is. And I actually want it to be the entire width leaving a little bit at the edge there. Super important to not, not compress by going down. You always wanna try and go straight. So therefore you're probably putting a lot of pressure down on the bottom. And then as you come towards you, you're putting a little less pressure to really get that horizontal plane that you want. Okay. So now I'm going to quote unquote, pull the walls. give myself a little bit more of an eating area. And you're gonna notice that it is gonna start to create a little bit of a space under here. And that's okay, because you wanna be able to get your finger under there so that you can pull your walls. Okay, so once we start to theoretically open our plate, we're gonna compress and we're gonna decide that right here is where we want our food area to go. So from here to here. And now what we want to do is we start to pull the walls. So I scoop my finger underneath here. I'm going to give myself a little bit of a ledge or a crevice to get my finger up in there. Now I'm going to start to pull my clay, my walls up. So just like I'm pulling a cylinder, I'm going to start to pull my wall. Now I want to scoop up from inside, but I don't want too much because I still want something to support the horizontal part of my wall, but I don't want to leave too much clay underneath here because then what we're going to do is have a super thick spot here and thin up here and it's going to dry unevenly. A lot of people end up with cracks in the base of their plates, um, S cracks or stress fractures. The S cracks are from water sitting there and the stress fractures are from thicker parts try, drying a lot slower than the thinner parts. So I'm gonna let you in on a little production secret. Um, I started to do this yesterday and someone walked in so I don't do videos when people are in the room. So I had to let my clay sit on here for a little bit longer than I would have. So we are dealing with slightly drier clay which could be a good thing or a bad thing. I guess we'll have to see. So you'll notice what I'm doing is I'm actually scooping up clay from the bottom and bringing it up, just like I would a very short, narrow bowl, but you'll notice that I have a decent amount of clay on the bottom. And I have that on the bottom because, again, I need to put that foot Okay. So now I'm starting to pull it up. 
I don't want it too thin. And remember, I always like to keep a much thicker lip or a pretty substantial lip on anything that I do. Get on down here. I'm gonna hang out down on the bottom a bit so I can start to get that clay up. Now I'm gonna start to go straight up. So what I've actually made now is almost just like a flat cylinder. But what I want, I'm sorry, a short cylinder. But what I'm gonna end up doing is pulling out this wall just a little bit so it comes out here, and then I'm going to pull it up, and then I'm gonna create the, the rim of the platter or plate. That's gonna give me, at that point, you're gonna decide how decorative you wanna be. Do you want like a big, uh, sort of like a canvas to create. So I'm putting a little bit more pressure on my inside hand. You'll notice that it's starting to go out just a little bit more than it was before. I've slowed my wheel down just a little bit so I can get sort of a grip on the amount of clay that I'm pulling up. that the production glitch will allow me to get this to go a little bit more parallel to the bat because the clay is so dry. Okay, so now I've gotten my walls pulled up and now I want to decide how much of a rim of the plate do I want, or the ledge or the flapper, whatever it is. So now I'm going to choose a spot. I'm going to choose about an inch from the top and I'm going to put my inside finger attached to my left hand, just a little bit below my right finger, and I'm gonna start to push down. But with every extra push, I'm waiting for a full rotation. And I don't wanna go completely parallel to the bat yet. Once you go past that sort of um, 90 degree angle and you go here, it can really only go bad from there. It can start to flop a little bit more because of gravity or just the clay being too wet, which hopefully I won't have that problem right now. So what I wanna pay attention to now is the inside, and then I'll start to work on that being flat. I have this tool here, I made sure I had it yesterday. And it's a metal rib, um, it's flexible, but it sort of has the shape. Now I'm not a big multiple tool person, but there are a couple of tools that I enjoy. And I've talked often about just that regular steel or metal rib that comes with it. But this one actually allows me to cheat a little and create the shape that I want. So if I want a really shallow bowl, I would use that side. But if I want it to be almost gradual, I'm gonna use this side. Super important to hold it at a certain angle. You've gotta hold it towards you. If you go this way, it's gonna stick right in. And I'm just going to definitively decide where I want what I want this slope to look like. And it actually takes off a little extra clay, so that's not so bad. Maybe I'll flip it the other way, give it a little bit more of a defined uh, angle. I'm just holding on to it. I'm supporting the outside with my sponge because I don't want it to sort of flap over like that. And now what I've actually done is I've pulled it out enough so that I've given myself a little bit more of a serving area or food area. So now I don't, I don't like when it just gradually goes. It doesn't look like I made a definitive decision. So right now I'm going to use this side of the tool with my sponge underneath to create the ledge or the rim of the plate. And I'm looking for about an inch. And again, I'm not going to that full 90 degree angle from or parallel to the bat because I just don't, I'm afraid it's gonna flop a little. I like a thick rim. Thick pots don't chip as much as thinner pots. People in my studio have heard me say that Chip from Beauty and the Beast, his name would have been Charles if his lip never chipped. And his lip chipped because it was so damn thin. Okay, so now I'm just gonna kind of finish myself off here a little. My wheel is not going super fast, but I, I just decided I want this to be a little bit more defined over here. 
push that down a little bit more too. So now it looks like I made a conscious decision that these are the different parts of the plate. I didn't just gradually decide, oh, here's a slope. So here's my eating area. Here's my decorative rim if I choose to make it decorative. And make that a little rounder. Okay. Now at some point here, I'm just gonna have to call it a pot. I think that's gonna be right now. So as we say here, call it a pot, take my wood tool. I don't have to take a lot off. I just, I wanna make it so that when I trim my pot, I don't have that, that point, oh, that pointy part. Little piece of flying clay. Now remember, I can fix this with the wheel moving. Don't ever touch your clay unless the wheel is moving. Now if I wanted to, um, maybe I want a sort of a decorative design here, or maybe it's bumpy and you want to hide it. Um, I can go ahead with my finger and stick it in here to get sort of that spiral effect. What that's going to do is um, give me a great pooling sort of texture to get myself some good glazes. But when I choose my glaze, I want to make sure that it fills it in all the way. Otherwise, I've got a plate that holds. So with my finger or my knuckle, my wheel's going relatively fast but my hand is gonna go faster. So here we go. You really only get one chance to do this. All right, I lied, let's do it another time. Use the sponge instead since the clay is so dry. There we go. So there you go, we got ourselves like a nice little sort of decorative swirl. So if you're gonna use like a cone six or to cone 10 glaze, you're gonna get a nice little um, variation in color in there. Now, um, when I use my wood tool, I did have that excess down on the bottom, but because it's a plaster bat, I'm never gonna be able to get that off safely. So I'm just gonna leave it. So now the goal is you just let it sit. I'm gonna let it sit for about, I don't know, an hour or two hours. We did have a thunderstorm last night, so it's a little moist in the air, damp in the air. So it might take a little longer. Then with the plaster bat, I'm just gonna gently cover it overnight. And hopefully what's gonna happen is the plaster on the bottom will start to absorb the clay, the moisture from the bottom. And this should just pop right off. Pro tips, we don't ever wanna test our plate or our platter by pulling the sides. If you pull the sides and the center is still stuck, your clay and your dish is going to remember and at the end of the firing, it will warp. So when we are testing our pot to see if it's ready to come off of the plaster bat, we're gonna grab it from the bottom. And if you feel any bit of resistance, you just wanna stop and wait until you know that it's just gonna pop off. But again, try never to pick it up by this. If it's stuck here, you now just hold the clay that it's gonna warp. Now we cross our fingers and we hope that it pops off in time. Okay guys, so there it is. That's how you make a plate. Good luck. Keep on going. Don't just do one and move on to another um, shape or form. Stick to the plates. Use exactly the same amount of clay each time. Make sure you're making it thick enough to have a real good foot on the bottom. This way you can glaze the bottom of your pot. That's sort of uh, something that people run into problems with. When they don't have a good foot, they often put glaze here and it sticks to the kiln and ruins the shelves of your community studio or your own uh, shelves. So keep going, make several plates over and over. Remember to compress, 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 and hopefully you make yourself a dinner set. Hopefully you only have two people in your family and this way you only have to worry about two plates. Have a great day and keep on practicing guys.